Hello, my name is Ken Colgan with TheBIMGuys.com. In this series of videos, we're going to cover how to use Navisworks Freedom to open files, look around, and review markups. Let's get started. The first thing we'll do is open up Navisworks Freedom. Now I have it open on the screen. You can see here Autodesk Navisworks Freedom 2019. Now this works in all the current versions, including 2021, 2022, etc. The first thing you need to do is open up a file. Now, Navisworks Freedom is a free viewer from Autodesk, and it'll let you review the Navisworks files, which have an extension of NWD. So let's take a look. I'm going to drop this down here, and I've just loaded it, so it's going to be just like it would if it came out the box when you installed it. When you drop down the end, you're not going to have any recent documents because, well, we haven't had any yet because we just started here. So what we're going to do is hit the Open button. Now, you'll have to download the file and make it available so you can find it on your desktop. Now, I'm linked directly to the folder that we'll be using on this project, and you'll see here that Navisworks is asking for or looking for certain file types. You'll see it's relatively limited, but the one you're looking for is the NWDs. Now, the NWDs are usually recorded after the meeting and contain all markups and notes. So if we go to the last model that we uh, brought up would be uh, at the meeting would be 5.6, but we also added 157 with duck options as per Dale. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. We hit open. Now it's going to take a minute to load because it's loading up all the data. And then you'll see the view here. Now, by default, it's going to pull up the last view that was saved when the file was created. So this is where it was saved last. Now, you'll see this is, if you're working on this project with this, you'll know this is the area of concern. Now, what I'm going to do is take a look at a few different pieces. The first thing is just getting around. How do I zoom in and zoom out? The first thing you want to know about this application is it uses the same interface as the other Autodesk applications. So if I want to zoom in, I'm going to take my mouse and there's the center button or a roll, roll or scroll. And I'll scroll inward and you'll see how it goes inward toward where my pencil or arrow is. So I'm going to come over here, hit the arrow, and I'll put the arrow over here and I'm scrolling. Notice how it becomes the center of where we're uh, zooming in. So keep that in mind, whether you're in AutoCAD, Revit, or in Navisworks. If my cursor is over here, I'll ping it a couple of times. You'll see it zooms in on that area. So an important little tidbit there. Now, what if you zoomed in and you want to move left to right? Then take the center button or scroll or roller and press it down so it clicks, and then you can pan left and right. So this is the pan tool. That'll pan around, which makes it easy. Uh, the next one we'll take a look at is actually the orbit. So to do an orbit, the best way is to first select an object. For instance, let's say I wanted to look at these pipes over here. Now I may pan them to the center of the screen just for clarity, and then I highlight one of those pipes. You'll see it turn green. I'll actually select a duct so you can see it better. Once the duct is selected, then we're going to do kind of a mix of keystrokes here. We're going to push the middle mouse button down just like we're panning, but we're going to do it while we hold the, the shift key down. So shift, middle mouse button, that sp spins into the orbit tool or pivot, you can see how I'm pivoting about the object that was selected, and I'm spinning or orbiting around that object. So we can continue to do this till we find where we want to look, and then we can again zoom in, zoom out, and then again pushing the middle mouse button down, we can pan left or right. So that's how you get around in this application. Now, at this point, you'll notice that the floor is cut um, uh, above nice and clean. I see all the equipment, etc. So. We'll get into that, how to adjust that in a moment, but let's take a look at also how to review other views that have already been created. Now, depending on who you're working with, most of the BIM coordinators will create folders over here, and they'll have a base set that'll help you get around. So, for instance, in this scenario, you'll see I have a 00. If I click 00, that's usually going to send you under the building, which you can see right there. Uh, then you go to level 1, and you just kind of work your way up. Now you'll notice that some of these, there's a handful of level ones here. These are views that are saved with different information turned on or off. So let's say BIM with architecture and then BIM without architecture. You'll notice how these presets, it's making it easy for you to just go to an area and not have to remember what to turn on and off. So if we go to with architecture, you'll see that you can see pretty much everything in the model. Um, so again, I'm going to zoom in, zoom out, and if we were looking at that part over here, we can pick it and then spin around like so. So that's the base views. Then as you go down, you'll see their dates, and they're broken down different ways depending on who the BIM modeler is or the BIM uh, coordinator. So let's go down toward the bottom here. 
and you see we have lots of dates here. I'm just going to open up one of these from last week, and if I pick on one of these, you'll see that we've added some notes uh, in here. We're discussing how to maybe reroute the uh, drain line for this element here. As you pop through, you'll see there's different notes depending on different views that were saved along the way. This is just three or four different views of that area. Here is another view of another area noted up here. So you can click through these and see what's going on and uh, see the notes that were taken during the meeting. Now, uh, if you wanted to adjust some aspects of this, let's say I want to turn the architecture model back on. Well, these pre-saved views remember what model was on and off when the capture was done or the screen capture was done. And you can see these saved viewpoints along the side. Now, before I go any further, what if this doesn't exist? What if you don't have saved viewpoints? I'm going to close this. Sometimes that happens. You look up and it's gone. Or you open up Navisworks Freedom and it's gone. Now, by default, it should be there. But what if it's not? What we're going to do is go up to the View tab. When you select the View tab, if you go to the right, you'll see it says Windows. When you drop down Windows, these are windows that are available for you to utilize. Now, the main one that you want to look at if you are reviewing documents is you want to make sure that you have uh, the selection tree turned on and the saved viewpoints. Now, saved viewpoints are the one we just had, and you'll see it off to right here. Now, what this is doing is it's giving you the ability to, to go to a saved viewpoint, just like we had before. And then on the left, you have what's called selection tree. And if you go toward the top, these are all the files that are creating this, this assembly here. So within this assembly, you can see in this instance, we have looks like almost 20 files. Now, I'm going to use this little slider and make this a little bigger. You can see my cursor. I'll ping it, and I'll drag it over here. So I can see the file names. And in this particular instance, you'll see it has a CHS. That represents the project. The L010203 represents the level. And then the actual last part, WVS, would represent, represent for instance, waste vent systems, uh, mechanical plumbing systems, etc. So that's how we can delineate between these. Uh, if you wanted to turn one on or off, what you could do is you just come over here and you'll see if it's gray, it's actually turned off. And if you see that it is black, it is turned on. For instance, notice we're not seeing any of the architectural model here. Notice the architectural model is grayed out. You just select the model, right click, and you'll see it says hide. Now, when I hit hide and I hit it, notice it has a check mark by it, it will actually unhide it. Now you can use a control H. Now some people do that during the meetings. They'll just grab the, the element and then they hit just control H. Now if you're not looking, you just see things turn on and off and you're wondering how that's happening. Usually that's uh, the, the meaning there. That's what's happening. So notice now it's on. You can see all the architectural elements here. And you can see how a note was made here. Uh, like so many times there'll be notes down here written. Um, for instance, you'll see it says reroute free online. So those are discussed here. So by using the notes over here and then using the views here and then turning different files on and off you can get around uh, like so. When you open it up the first time don't panic you will not see a bunch of files because they're all contained in this one NWD. Expand it out and you'll see all the parts that make it happen. Um, getting back to just the way I organize some different things at this point we're still vetting out who's doing what etc. So we just have them in open folders. At one point we may start putting them in folders like these are mechanical tasks, these are electrical tasks, etc. But currently, we're putting it out here and we're just saying we have an issue. Um, we're trying to get each group to work the issues out, so it's not we're not going to determine who, who does it just yet. So if we click on this, you'll see this is um, an object FA. It stands for a clash between fire and architecture. Uh, you'll see there's all these different prefixes, P for plumbing, D for duct, and down the line. Uh, as we move across, you'll then see a number. This is for reference. If I wanted to reference somebody who's not um, looking at the model or send an email. And then there's usually a little, little descriptor next to it explaining what it is. So this is, says this is a clash between fire and architecture. It's number 452C. So you notice they're all 452s. Those are all related to the same one. And an RFI says that's, been, that's what's happening with that. So as you go through here, you'll see there's lots of different ones noting different things here from the meeting. Uh, so that's how we can get around. Again, if you do get lost, you're like, oh, I don't want to be here anymore. Just go back up to the top, pick one of the ones that you want to view, start viewing from, and you can start to fly around. If you do have a preset that you say, hey, we're working on this rerouting of the free on lines, or are we going to move the duct down to clear the drains, you can go to that quickly. 
So these are going to help you get around. Once you find the spots you want to work, then you can zoom in and zoom out to see what you want to see. So that's how we make these things happen. The final thing is we'll take a look at this. I'm going to go back up to L1 with Arc. And you'll see here we have these two gray lines. This is the new option one that uh, Dale was talking about uh, considering in the last meeting. So you'll see these gray ducts that are coming through here. So these are just placeholders right now. And you can see how it's been rerouted in this area. If you want to see the differences between them, what you can do is just turn off the different file types. If we scroll to the bottom, you'll see we have, first of all, we have the original duct. Now that's going to be M1 duct here. They come in as a loaded, so you'll see that's that, that's the one we were working with. That's the main model one. But I'm going to turn that off. I right click, hit hide. So that duct system's turned off. Now you'll see I see two more duct systems in here. If we scroll down, you'll see we have an option one and an option two. Now I'm going to turn off option one. And you'll see that this is an alternative uh, mechanical model. It looks a little different, which is just fine. But you can see how, in this instance, we're considering running that duct over and then bring in it this way. So what that does, it clears up this congested corridor so we can get the other systems in. So it looks like a, a, a good, maybe a good alternative what we're trying to do. And uh, we'll have to discuss it with the team. Now, if you want to look at another one, what I'll do is I'll now go ahead and hide this one, hide this one, and then hide this one. So notice we're just turning files on and off. And if I click off of it, see it's grayed out. So you can see what uh, what's happening here. So that's a quick way to uh, also compare models and see how things are working. So I hope you enjoyed the first of the series on Navisworks Freedom.